All right, guys, uh, back here today, Alex talking here. And uh, we're looking at the new fish tank setup, the 20 long, that's already, let's get some rid of, rid of some of that glare. Already got it planted fairly well. We've got um, some temple, plant, uh, temple plants and uh, baby tears and different kinds of moss. We've got um, bonsai plant and we've also got uh, some rare strains of moss over here from Japan, uh, escaping my name at the moment. But in any case, here is some stone. It's ADA approved stone, uh, shipped over from uh, from overseas in the Himalayas. And an interesting thing about this stone, if you notice, is it is bubbling. It is full of air. Um, so it was probably formed either as a siltstone or as a very, very fast volcanic blast with some sulfur and iron and trace other minerals. I'm not too worried about that. Um, they've been boiled, and I'm doing so with some more to try to build up this kind of reddish-purple mountain range uh, with my guppies here. We've got the guppy fry in this tank. And uh, also just threw in some shrimp. Um, we've got some cherry shrimp going on now. Um, of course, they immediately disappeared, uh, but we'll uh, hunt for them later. So in any case, I just wanted to show you what was going on with this uh, new redstone. Now, a tip when you're aquascaping is to take the stones, and see, I haven't gotten these to a final position yet. That stone uh, in the back here is kind of uh, out of the ordinary. It's not a normal stone for how a rock formation would find form. You see that there's these grains uh, running in, in, in a cliff. And if you look at a mountain range, there's grains too. And that's where the earth has folded over on itself. So it's important to look at the macro scale when you're working on the micro scale. And I've followed that pattern somewhat here with the banding, along with the banding here. But this guy is slightly off. I just happen to love that little arc. So I might be moving him to this uh, far back side of the tank over here just to kind of uh, even things out and kind of continue this little mountain range. Um, now I'm going to take you over here real quick to uh, show you that same rock boiling away with some other rocks. Uh, I usually turn it around a couple times and that just kind of ensures that anything hanging on to it is dead now. So uh, any bacteria, algae, uh, parasites, that kind of thing, not going to be a problem. But it's important to wait for your rocks to cool down definitely um, because they definitely stay hot for quite a while and depending on the stone, depending on how long you boil it, uh, that can make a big difference. Now another option follow me, uh, that you have is to get a big old gallon of bleach. This is the 199, you know, big spender Walgreens brand. And, uh, you get a, a jug of that for two bucks. Can't beat it. And just go, if you live on the coast, you can go to the beach. If you live in the middle of the country, you can go, uh, maybe a boulder pit or a gravel pit, a landscaping place even. But what you do is you take that bleach and you do it at about one to five parts. So five parts water, one part bleach. And you just let it soak a little while. Now after this, the this stone here, we got a little bit of granite, some diorite, and then something that looks like it's very heavy in iron. And that could be a potential issue, but my temple plants that you saw at the beginning of the video, the reason I mention those is they require quite a bit of iron. So we'll have to check those levels. Be careful. You don't want something that's rust red and crumbling. If it's a hard enough stain on there, then it may not be a problem. Um, but that's one way you can treat your uh, rocks, stones, driftwood. You really want to treat a different way. But the bleach and then the boiling really ensures that uh, you don't have anything too nasty going on in there. And, you know, I've got the same thing going on in a bag here with some gravel that I sourced from 
somebody else's tank so if you ever see somebody who's got some used gravel uh, put it in a colander kind of shake free what you can get a big old sturdy bag poke some holes in it and then fill it with that 20% uh, bleach uh, mixture that I was talking about. A 10% bleach cleaning mixture is what most people use. I do the 20 and then I let it evaporate off. It evaporates off real quickly. It's uh, just the same as chlorine, so when you add your dechlorinator, uh, just make sure that you do that with the rock. So during a water change is a good time to do that if you treated your rock with any sort of bleach or chlorine. So uh, that's all I got to say today. It's a beautiful day out here in uh, the Pacific Northwest. This is Alex saying goodbye and I'll talk to you later.